This is not the 40 and Slip Science Minute. No. This is down the rabbit hole with David Batdorf. 10,000 years ago, like, you know, we were building the pyramids, and those little guys, these little tiny monkey men kind of looking... So, so the, uh, the, the, the kind of cross-hatching of greenery that goes through there, yeah, yeah, so this, there's this, like... It, it's kind of weird. Um, again, you know, correlation does not equal causation. You know, I really don't like this form of evidence. But then again, what do I know? Had him do jumping jacks. Had him chase Chris back and forth over. <laughs> the man a video of me being chased through the woods by Bigfoot. Unless I'm sitting there standing next to the giant ape-like creature and I hear it make the sound while I'm looking at it and I can tell that the sound is coming from it, not from a ventriloquist. <laughs> <clears throat> then like, I will no, know. I believe in Bigfoot, but that might have been a ventriloquist making that sound. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so do we take the blue pill or the red pill tonight, David? I gotta go with the red pill, Chris. Alrighty, Rue, here we go, motherfucker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Down the Rabbit Hole with David Batdorf, episode two, take two. 2.2.8. Point, <laughs> point, point oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to this one. Because we're gonna be, we're gonna be perfectly practiced. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're completely prepped. <laughs> we know the material. <laughs> I forgot everything we talked about. It's perfect. <laughs> the the host of this show um, had his head up his ass the last time we recorded, and didn't turn on his microphone. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> I, I, I. It was so funny. I remember I clicked everything off. We were done, and I'm looking at the audio, and I'm like, "Why are there these huge gaps in the audio?" <laughs> and then I started listening to it, and then David would talk, and then there was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember sitting in the hangout afterwards, and Chris just goes. You're fucking shitting me. And I knew immediately what <laughs> happened. <laughs> I knew immediately what happened, and that was it. That was that was the end. We're like, we're not going to talk about this ever again. <laughs> oh, we'll do it oh, over. Oh, oh, we're going to talk about it. Just we, <laughs> we needed some time for Chris to cool down. <laughs> <laughs> Mulligan, Mulligan. Holy shit. Yeah, so this is the Man Before Man episode. Um. David and I were talking uh, recently, well, um, it was recently before recently, actually, <laughs> about the idea of civilization before civilization. Uh, recently, a, uh, some researchers came out with a paper on, I believe it was Australopithecus, was it Afarensis or Africanus? I can't fucking remember which one. That Af Africanus, I believe, is the one they were talking about. Um, and this paper or this research uh, said that they have a grip like humans do, or like the Homo. Is it genus? Uh, yeah, the a genus Homo, or you know, the the first the emerging, you know, the Homo rudolfensis and and Homo habilis. You know, habilis is the handyman. Uh, they're saying that this guy had uh, a thumb that looked like it had the stresses of working with fine tools or working, you know, fine movements, um, and and you know the pl the places that attach and that l allow us to do the things that we do with our hands, which is really interesting because this is a a, a pretty solid artifact showing that w whether or not they were making tools, they had they were doing things that put the the same stresses on. You know, we we haven't found the tools, but we've they're they're doing things that look like they're making tools. The stresses are on the bones. It's everything looks correct. That they could at least they could have made tools, but that that's that's a really interesting thing. So that you know, control of fire, use of tools, you know, art and culture and and all these other things. That's that's how we define man. Very very much so uh, versus just you know, 
be, being uh, like a, a pre-human, like these 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 archaic hominins, like you know Australopithecine. It's so it's really interesting to see, and you would expect there's going to be some gray area there for sure. That's how evolution works. You got to get from one point to another, and it didn't just happen overnight. You know, uh, Homo, Homo habilis didn't just fall out of the sky with a tool and go, "Hey guys, <laughs> this out." Yeah, um, he didn't just parachute out of the sky and like, "Hey, I'm here." <laughs> but but you know, th those are kind of the thought processes that you have to prove it first, and then uh, that that one little finger bone um, gives you a little bit of that you know prove it first and and sh shows that they're doing things i i'm it's, it was been, it's been a week or two so i'm forgetting the exact tape but this is some you know some hundreds of thousands of years prior to where tool use is known um in the fossil record right and we had talked about this the last time we recorded this episode yeah. um uh where I, I was a little bit confused um because it isn't so much the opposable thumb as it is the grip, because you had said that you know some of the apes have opposable thumbs. Well, um, all all apes and pri primates. One of the traits of primates is an opposable thumb. But they just it, don't it, use the tools in the same way that we do. It, exactly. So so having that, um, I forget what the grip name is. Like I, I I think I had it looked up for the last one. But um, yeah, so a a a, a monkey of any sort is going to be able to grasp around and and, and climb up you know a, a bamboo shoot if you will because their hands wrap around their thumbs oppose their fingers and then it, you know if you make a circle you know an okay sign with your finger your thumb is opposed to your forefinger now that same primate can does not have the fine muscles to move over and touch its own pinky right so it, it's that the movement of the thumb laterally uh, uh, up and down um, Versus, you know, being being actually opposable that makes that different. So yeah, a, an opposable thumb is not a human trait, Correct. but uh, having this really nimble thumb. Um, and actually, there's studies that because of uh, video game technology and cell phones and technology getting smaller, uh, our our you know main digits, our our four main digits aren't as usable, and our thumbs have become and are slowly becoming. And I totally see this now. I, I've never I I don't pick up a phone and dial with my index finger anymore. It's my thumbs. Right. Um, our thumbs are actually becoming our dominant fingers, which is interesting. And that could you know it potentially force evolution in a whole different path because technology gets so small, we have to hold it in our hands and curb over our thumbs to use it. Uh, that it's really interesting, and definitely we're probably more dexterous in our thumbs than. You know, our our ancestors, meaning like our grandparents, ever would have imagined. It's crazy, right? And this reminds me of a story I did recently on the Forty and Slip, um, where anoles in Florida that are in a certain section because of predators are moving higher into the trees, and they've they've actually cataloged at this point that they're gro they're one of their um, digits on their feet is growing longer due to natural selection and they're they're changing because of this change to their environment yeah and and that's something that doesn't happen quickly it, you know it, in, unless you know, somehow the, they were cut off and there was no breeding back down the tree or way or what have you um, but uh, that, that, that doesn't seem to be the case because the tree is always going to make it to the ground. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so so I mean that's something that happens over a long period of time. But it certainly it certainly does happen. Um, but the, you know the interesting thing is you know taking it back, kind of looking towards us again is you know even something as simple as you know the the technology the the. The, the force of selection is that the technology gets smaller, and then we start to do things differently. Uh, our, you know, I don't know how, how that's possibly more. That's not more selectable sexually. That's a, that's a bad example. Uh, but, but you know, <laughs> these these things. No, but these things that we do culturally, um, they they leave a mark on our bones, and you can see what we've been doing because I mean, we're we're all going to get arthritis in our thumbs instead of our our pinkies now or what right. what not. You know, <laughs> right? Ab ab absolutely. And, you know, to br go back to the before man, so you have this, this new research, and I have always been fascinated by the idea of a technological civilization before civilization. 
And you constantly hear these stories about, oh, they just unearthed another fucking city somewhere. It's dated 10,000 years before the earliest known civilization, at least. Um, somewhere in the late Cretaceous period. It fucking, no. it fucking, yeah, it puts people back in the Jurassic area, era. <laughs> Oh, it, I mean, it, it, we've we think we know the you know the cradle of civilization or or whatnot when people started to, to using you know using farming as, as a way of sustaining a way of life and building structures and staying in a particular area in like Mesopotamia, right? Mm -hmm. And we we know where that began in Mesopotamia. Well, t for us to point at that. We, we can say with some certainty until other things other things are found that this is the earliest known uh, like <laughs> the earliest known example of that of of a farming cultural area like people are hunkered down they're building houses and they're living here and then culture comes afterwards and you can actually see that happen there which is great but it's kind of like us thinking that we're the only life in the universe like the mesopotamia was the only place where that happened or that 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 it, it ever happened when we know that at that same time there were already people that were traveling all over you know modern people that were traveling all over the world and that probably happened before mesopotamia but well, we haven't found it that's the one, that's the beautiful thing about archaeology there's always that one more find it's like you know it's kind of like gambling it's like oh I'll, I'll play one more time. I'll hit it. I swear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, like, but, but there's always that one more thing that's just a little bit older than teaches you a little bit more. Um, and and that, so it, it's almost for certain that there were these technologically advanced, wh whatever you know, technology you're talking about. If it's a it's something as silly as a plow, um, you know, or 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 whatnot. But the thing that really blows my mind are some of those civilizations that did have, like, sciences. Or, or some hard stuff um, that, that you can look at, like like the, the Mayan technologies, and it was mostly like you know, and their, their astronomy and, and the calendar right. and things and like their, that. Their ability to track the movements of the stars through the sky, at, at, and and to predict the movements of the of the stars oh, through the sky, right where they would be later on with a pinpoint accuracy, just absolutely amazing. Um, but and and they, and they set up you know t tools um like you know, surveying tools and stuff to be able to do that like something as simple as a hole through a, a through a rock that only allowed you to look at a very specific place at a specific time but you, you know to pr to to predict and to learn how the the world worked and and everything um you know it was it was a uh, those are things that we kind of take for granted and like oh they're savages well no this is some really serious technology they, they, yeah they had some it, hardcore we, shit going on yeah <laughs> like like the, you know we, we came through and found this later but we were we were behind them in, in this technological race at that point in time in, in that in, you know that particular aspect i mean they, they didn't they didn't have gunpowder and and <laughs> and and they weren't making you know ar suits of armor uh if they had no, they, they were, might they have were making human sacrifices <laughs> david they were making human well, sacrifices yeah. <laughs> Yes, they were making human <laughs> sacrifices and playing sports that ended up in, in decapitations and whatnot, <laughs> disembowelment. Um, <laughs> it's pretty badass, if you ask me. No, I. Th but I. Those sort of stories, like you're like, man, there, there's probably more of those out there too. Yeah, and I, what fascinates me about the idea of a civilization before civilization is that you look at these shows like life after man or you know whatever and we had spoken kind of about that in the the first show when we're gone the the marks that we've made on this planet the technology that we have this amazing technology that allows you and i to talk from one end of the country to the other in real time it's all going to be gone in a matter of a blink really in the whole scheme of things Oh, and, absolutely. And then once that's gone, what's left to say that we were here? Now, what fascinates me or has always fascinated me is like the thought, the idea of these, you know, like Baghdad batteries where they were, they, there's obviously people making an electrical device of some kind. Now, what were they doing with it? I don't fucking know. You don't know. F nobody fucking knows for, for real. But here's the, the idea that I like to entertain. Maybe they had access to technology that was still lying around, that hadn't disappeared yet, and they were trying to use it. 
or they were trying to reboot that technological civilization. Because you, you know as well as I do that if civilization fell tomorrow, like if shit went down, and we had to somehow scramble back to get a power grid up or running water going again. We as human beings, having all these creature comforts for so long, would claw to make sure that we had that shit again. Uh, exactly. And, and, you know, I, to, to, to what end was the, what, what, the Baghdad battery? Could that not have been just somebody experimenting with you know, acids and alkalines and, and what, what they do. I mean, that could have been like the first science lab, right. if you it, will. It may have been just a fluke, just somebody fucking around, and they, they, they fucking put two wires on their finger, and they were like, oh, what the fuck was that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How, why did that work? So I could use that to it, get information out of people. But I do like to entertain the idea that there was a technological civilization before civilization. I think that's a fascinating thought that maybe all of this has happened before. I always bring up, you know, like, because I, I grew up, you know, thinking about, uh, in, in the back of my mind, like the stories of Atlantis, like the, sun, the, 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 the sunken city, you know, that had technologies and riches beyond belief and the blah, crystal blah, blah, people. Blah, blah, That's a, when I think yeah. of Atlantis, I think of the people, I think of crystal technology. <laughs> Qu <laughs> quartz crystals run in the world, David. Well, don't they really? Yeah, I know oh. exactly. That's what I mean. I think they were right. Uh, but yeah, so like, there, there's a lot of really, uh, like, I don't know. It, 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 one can can speculate in one hand, but then in the other, like, you have to, you have to remember that we're going back to to Australopithecus, and we're we're saying, okay, now we need to reboot what they were doing. And if we're rebooting what they were doing. And like, if Africanus has, you know, like this potential precursors to other species, and then the the bushy Homo genus that goes all over the place, and there's all these other things, then you get even even into like, you know, Homo sapiens. Like, if you want to say that Neanderthal was a Homo sapiens species, or if it was a, its own thing, whatever. Um, but civilization and and the creation of complex tools that leads to civilization was evident. In, in Neanderthal culture as well, and separately from ours, you know, we came and we were the, uh, um, you know, we we were throwing our spears. They were, so we used these lightweight spears, and and we we wrapped them together. And we you would just throw them, and it was a one impact thing. But Neanderthals were taking down bigger game, and they had these short, like stabbing spears that were thick, and they actually um, used a, a uh, an industrial process where by which they put uh, tree sap into skulls buried it underground with hot rocks turned it into pitch and basically glued the end of their spear onto this the stabbing stick right right and that that was something that was not evident in in, in uh, like we we didn't see us doing that we saw them doing that and then probably later we saw us doing that right so so we probably got that technology from intermingling with them in the, all the places that we lived and going, man, that's pretty, that, that's, that spearhead's really on there. How'd you get the, how'd you do that? <laughs> and now uh, with, with this new research, it's, it, it, it begs the question, did some of these earlier forms of man pass on technology, pass on forms of civilization to Neanderthal, to, to the Homo genus? Like, yeah, or, or we, we know almost nothing about, the the Denisovan people, except for their co the uh, closer cousins to the Neanderthals, and they interbred with us as well. Right. Um, so, and we all share a little bit of that that DNA, which means we all probably share a little bit of that culture because it probably wasn't all um, you know uh, non consensual sex that we were having. There's probably a lot of consensual sex too, and we were probably you know just like it was like the night. The, the neighbors down the street, you know, it just they just didn't look quite like us. Um, right, right, exactly. And, and, but but and, that, uh, that didn't that didn't mean that little Johnny didn't want to go play with Susie down there a little bit, you know. And, and <laughs> Johnny uh, and Susie might have fallen in love. We don't fucking know. But the, yeah. the fact of the matter is, what evolved out of that was not just a species, but a culture that uh, it, it evolved technology and culture. As well, and that that's the part of it that's kind of fascinating, is that you take the culture of these Denisovans, the culture of these Neanderthals, the culture of you know whatever it was 
we were at that point that we intermingled with them, you know, and it, it all got amalgamated into this just fucking thing that came I mean, out. So, so the, to a point that's true, but also if you imagine the point where we're we we've all gone our separate directions, let's say, um, and uh, you know. <laughs> Aside from the whole extinction thing, you know, the modern humans had probably the the closest call bottleneck. Um, so, you know, our technology that we had it was all probably lost down to a particular point, and then you know had to when we left from that bottleneck of what they say is uh, like could be as few as like ninety thousand individuals on the planet. You know, think about that. I mean, that, that's like I live in a pretty small city. That's like the size of my city limits proper is all that there is on the planet. Yeah. End of, end of story. Uh, and then <laughs> it could have been know, over. So, 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 yeah, that's all the. I mean, that that's basically down to like it could be extinction, um, depending on your your gene pool. Um, and uh, so they they only have this amount of technology, and then as they move back out, that's still the only amount of technology that they have until they create their own. But all three of those species, and you know, now they're saying that there could be a fourth um, species of contemporary, like. Homo, like related enough, you know, could be Homo sapiens as well. Yeah, we're still we're still trying to figure out this all all this business, but um, there, you you have a starting point, and then you send everything out, and there's going to be divergent cultural evolution as well, and we're all being tool users, all having big brains, and all utilizing everything from our environments. We're living in different environments. We've been separated for like, you know, at some points up to like five hundred thousand years. And we're going to come up with some different shit, right? Right. <laughs> so, so, so who's to say that, you know, our relatively new, you know, coming out of this bottleneck probably lost mo more than we remembered as a, as a species. Um, you know, we were probably the technological underdogs. We just had our numbers that came back in droves um, and offset the balance of, of whatever ecosystem we went into because we weren't supposed to be there and we were just traveling into it. Because we it. like to fuck, David. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's a, a fucking as a species, we like to fuck, and it's and, it, and, and we, that's we, amazing. We're exceptionally, we're exceptionally good at it. I mean, you know, think think about you know, you know what uh, like sixty thousand years ago, there was only ninety thousand of us. Yeah, and then from ninety thousand to and, and we now. die at a pretty rapid rate. You know, you think of like you know generation for generation. Now that's a lot of fucking. That is a fucking shit ton of fucking. <laughs> I just blew my own mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my little, you know, crazy ideas of technological civilization before civilization, you know, be that as it may, we know that there, you know, like I said, that there were some type of civilizations before us. And that in and of itself is f just crazy, cool, and I want to know more about it. Yeah, and, well, and, you know, the people, of course, I mean, this is the, the 40 and slip, right? You know, you got to bring in, like, the Anunnaki and, and, and all of this stuff with, you know, genetic splicing and, and, and te technological advancements that were given to us by, uh, you know, aliens whether it's Roswell or whether it's, you know, Sumerian. Hey, Sumerian I'm, I'm open, to, I'm open to any idea of what the fuck has happened to put us where we're at now. Chris, they can't make up their mind from one second to the next as to how the universe started, how it all began, where we come from, how the earth was made. They don't fucking know from one second to the next. It's constantly well, I, I, I'm changing. just I'm just sticking one to the uh, the ancient aliens crew, uh, you know, the, where, where they're, you know, the Anunnaki kind of kind of thing. Like, you know, like they're gonna throw this out there to the the Sitchin folks. What do they think about the, uh, the, the 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 globules that were found in the the Earth's atmosphere, little tiny uh, metallic balls with the biological ooze in them? That you know, there's there's researchers that are saying that they could be uh, aliens seeding our planet. With right. Life. We just we just did that news story on I believe it was Sunday or Saturday. Yeah, and, that came out recently. And, that was a and, fun one. And yeah, I, I hey, I'm down that that shit could have happened. Hey, I play fucking Sim City. I've played Sim Earth. You know, I'm down. I'm down. 
Like I fuck I like I like to think that this is a computer program some days and that somebody could be Neo. I I'm down, David. <laughs> like I, I I will go to these places. So it's not outside the I, realm of possibility for me that maybe, you know, maybe some alien was like, "Hey, let's let's make some sea monkeys." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, so for for me, I you know I I don't subscribe to a lot of those things, and I do like um, my 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 heart science and you know vetted information whenever possible. I was not able to find anybody's written research paper on these little globules, but for so my thought process isn't immediately aliens or you know the, this is the seeds of life from Dude, our planet. It was probably it was probably fucking shit. From the space station. It's <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you launch a Twinkie in into the Earth's atmosphere at a high rate of speed. No, so what I want to know is what are these fucking things? You can't just like say, oh, well, they're really interesting. It could be this and then drop it there. No, they're <laughs> going to look at what the fuck they are. That's what I want to know. I don't want to know this. I, I think it's interesting that they found them. I'm sorry, I don't agree that it was probably alien seeding our planet with life. And I'm going to wait to find out what the hell those things were. And it's going to be harder to find because it won't be as interesting as aliens. Right. Right. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. But, hey, I'm one of the, I am one of those people. I like to entertain those thoughts. I, I, but like you, I'm a huge skeptic. I just have that little button in me that likes to just go, um... I, I'm I'm actually reminded of something I can't remember what comedian said it, but about conspiracy theories, you know. And with conspiracy theories, I'm in for like the first five minutes, and then like after five minutes, I'm like it starts to unravel a little bit, and then as I go further, it unravels a little more. <laughs> You're like, oh. yeah. So, but I love to entertain this shit. Because it's always been a passion of mine. So when it comes to like the idea of civilizations before civilization, do I want to go down the Anunnaki road? I don't know that if I want to go down the Anunnaki road. But I, I think that, you know, hey, if some of these books like the Bahaga Vita, whatever the fuck the goddamn thing is, I don't know, I've heard it pronounced about a thousand times but i can't pronounce it myself <laughs> they talk about you know these flying machines and all that hey maybe there was a civilization that rose had air travel had space travel and then for some reason fell maybe they had a plague maybe some virus fucking wiped them out maybe it, they fought each other to death you know hey we we're constantly being put in to a state of fear about, you know, whether or not this country is going to attack this country or, you know, we're going to be at war with this country or terrorists are going to fucking attack us. Or... It, humans as a race are warring. And we like to fight. And we like to fucking kill each other. So I, I don't see it as, you know, outside the realm of possibility that humans at one time or a form of humans, or an earlier form of humans, could have had a civilization that rose and fell. And maybe the books that we see that talk about those things are other, you know, peoples further down the line trying to explain what they saw. Or what they, you know, these stories that have been handed down. Who knows? Who fucking knows, David? Yeah, it's it's a really tough question because so many times, I mean, especially the farther removed you are in time from, from the story, the more things change and the more it becomes, you know, potentially allegory and the more it, it, this, that, and the other, and the more fantastical that it becomes. Um, but it all had to start with either somebody's, you know, fact or fiction. 
right? <laughs> and so where 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 is that? And that's one of the like the fascinating things to me. That's that was still the most fascinating thing to me about the whole Sasquatch thing. Why I keep looking into it uh, is is that where is that line between? Fa- it's somewhere between somebody's fact and fiction is is the truth, and and it's kind of interesting to 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 play well, off that. Well, but the, the, well, the whole as thing. Far about, as, yeah, but as far as Sasquatch goes, here's the thing, David. You and I both know we've heard many accounts from people whom we would deem credible and yes. who would we would deem we would say this person is more than likely probably not fucking with us so if we're if we're going statistically there's something going on and that's what fascinates you and I about it yeah yeah and uh, <coughs> but so 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 the but one of the problems is is when there's people that go out into the woods looking for Sasquatch, and all of a sudden, everything that they hear, every bump, every <laughs> every every, every tree branch that falls, and is 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 a Sasquatch. Same thing happens with this, um, the, you know, the conspiracy theories or, or the, uh, the the ancient alien theories. It's just everything becomes alien or 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 this that, and the other there can and and like the ask question there could be other really fascinating things happening here right you know, really other like great things at play like you know if, if sasquatch is really speaking into your mind maybe it's not actually sasquatch maybe it's maybe you know maybe maybe maybe, maybe you're schizophrenic you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, or or like th- there's so many hmm. There's so many things that, that you look back at, and, and you're like, oh, well, there's no way that the, the Druids could have built Stonehenge with the technology of the time. Well, no shit, there's some fucking technology that we don't know about that they had that's amazing. That's the question that I have, not, did aliens build that? How did they do it? Because there's something we don't know about that they had. The question is, was, how the fuck did they do it? <laughs> yeah, like, there's no way they could have built the pyramids and known about this and that and the other. Well, no shit. That with the, obviously they could because they did. It's right there, plain as day, big fucking pyramid. <laughs> there it is. So, yeah, it probably wasn't aliens, and it probably wasn't you know uh, pulling pulling down into like you know. Uh, it wasn't magic. It? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, yeah, and, unless you know, like like the dude in, uh, in in South Florida, unless you can actually levitate all these stones. <laughs> the coral there, castle. That, that fucking thing's pretty yeah. cool, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but yeah so so where's the technology this guy this guy knows about it apparently yeah and, and that's the thing about all this that that just fascinates me is that it doesn't have to be supernatural and it doesn't have to be this crazy story it could just be something simple yeah most of the time like then and, and this is what i love the most it's like the the most exciting times in 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 like you know just being a fan of of science and especially like anthropology every time that we're wrong about something is amazing because we know we're right about something else right we we've we've overturned an old old thought process but the I don't know, like, the, when people start going on this conspiracy theory and, and these, like, you know, these wild goose chases, it takes away from the fact that, no, there's something really exciting going on here, and we need to get to the bottom of this. And the, and, and, and sometimes yeah. the facts are more amazing than these hypothetical ideas. The, sometimes, and someti- and- <laughs> sometimes, like, the real shit is crazier than the fucking made-up shit. Like I, I'm reminded, well, it's, it's, I saw yeah, I saw one of those uh, uh, post about those water bears today. These fucking tiny <laughs> creatures that can like live in fucking space. They can basically like walk on lava. I don't know what the fuck these things can do. They just can do everything, and they're incredible. And we don't yeah, we, and we don't sit around and talk about that shit, David. We don't sit around and talk about fucking water bears. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if one if if he ran into a four hundred pound water bear, <laughs> now, now he, uh, oh yeah, then <laughs> fucking fucking right, <laughs> <laughs> like hit it with napalm. Oh shit, he likes it. <laughs> but no, that's but, the, but that's uh, the yeah. thing. Sometimes those those the real shit is more amazing. Uh, absolutely, and and it's it's just. You know, the media doesn't like to hype it, and and the 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 phone news sources don't get as many hits off of it. 
you know, I, I mean, I, I love the, the folks that do, like, the, the independent stuff, and it doesn't seem like it's independent anymore because they've gotten so big, but I do believe it's still basically one person that runs I Fucking Love Science uh, on Facebook and, and the blog. Um, it's, it's just one person who's doing all that and just getting all the stuff together. Um, and, you know, I like being a fan of, of science or whatnot. You, I always do look up, you know, the, the source material. And everybody look up the source material, and if you can't find two good sources... It's probably not science. Uh, but she, they, she actually did a good post today that actually is right along the same line of what we're talking about. It's a lot of people misunderstand what science is. They think that science is like a repository of, of information. It's like, oh, it's not accepted science. It's not in the pile, the science pile or whatnot. You know, like, like it's like a big bag of dog shit or something. No, science is a process. It's a right. process by which you vet information, and it's it's kind of like the checks and balances of, of government, whatever that is anymore, but, um, the, 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 but actually designed to check and balance so that you can't pass bullshit. And so science is the process by which something becomes, you know, a fact or, or, a, or a, a, a working theory. You know, which a theory also is something that people don't understand. Like a, a theory is really pretty much, and it, it's as close as that you can get to a fact without it hitting you in the face, right? <laughs> <laughs> Elephants exist. Facts. You know, uh, yeah, like the, the theoreticals. You know, like you know, but because of this, 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 and this, an elephant can, you know see itself in the mirror and recognize that as itself. It's not a fact, it's a theory. Right. Because the elephant doesn't tell you that it does. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it doesn't hit you in the face. <laughs> and science so, is so often uh, put up against religion and I just think it's like, just leave it the fuck alone. Just the, God. I, I, religion ruins so many fucking friendships and situations <laughs> again i go back to humans killing fucking humans science is about fact fact and faith i'm sorry but let's just fucking separate them a little bit because i cannot go forward scientifically on faith you just can't no, do it they're, they're, that's it's exactly correct because I mean there's science is the process it's the discipline it's not it's not a thing like a scientist is only a scientist because they've basically they, they, they they've gone through college they've learned their their specific you know path that they're gonna they're gonna study and they basically they, you know by t taking that doctorate they're they're taking an oath to 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 be true to their scientific discipline, to the method, and, and right, to, to all the other disciplines. Follow the fucking process. Yeah, and and religion will not and cannot do that because it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not the same thing. You, you can come up. You can come up with you know hypotheticals, but they're never vetted because you can't. There's nothing to parse against. So science and and religion are never going to agree in and, and you can't debate them I, I know bill nye has tried and he basically <laughs> tries to just say well back up your well as, as you know from a religious standpoint you know i i mean I'm, I'm not the guy to be making these statements but from a religious standpoint like you you could look at science and say well you're not being fair because you're only playing science well that's true there's a lot of things that scientists won't allow to be fact even though it's obvious because you have to prove it. Right. And what the what the you know, the argument on the Christian side has always been, well, and and the ancient alien side and, and, and the conspiracy theory side, <laughs> like, is that well these this is obvious. There's an obvious correlation in there, and then the scientists will wag their fingers and say, you know, correlation does not equal causation. You must prove that through hard data. And there you have it. That's the, the 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 argument, and where you'll always end up. But I'm I I do like the fact that there is that th that higher bar, um, and and why I can look at a lot of things and just kind of like, yeah, there's no way anybody's ever going to be able to prove that. You know, whether it's in Bigfoot or anything else, like you know, it's like it's such and such, so and so says such and such. I'm like, yeah, ain't nobody going to be able to prove or disprove that. And, and so on. many things <laughs> just become stories. And going back to 
man before man, this mm-hmm. idea of civilization. Atlantis, it's a story. These fucking, uh, the writings in the bog, uh, thing they re- wiped their ass with when they were sitting on the loo, the toilet, whatever the fuck they called it back then. Uh, that thing, uh, it's a story. As far as we know, it's stories. Yeah, and so the interesting thing I, I, it, for me, like if, if you're thinking about it, like in a, in a in the aspect of cultural anthropology, where did that story originate? It, it's got it's widespread now, but where where did it start? And what was the kernel of truth? What was the what was the purpose? What was the need for the story? What, what, what was, was the start of what, the telephone game, David? Yeah, yeah. What was? Yeah, exactly. What was it based off of, and what? Where? What was the need for that story at the time in that place? And so, yeah, yeah. That's definitely one of the things that I I, I want to find with with the whole popular culture aspect of the Bigfoot thing, um, as as much as you know, like like the Atlantis thing. Like that. That's those are my questions always. You know, not not who. Who built the pyramids? Like fucking slaves built the pyramids, but how did they do it? Right, like, give me the solid answer as to how the fuck they did this shit. Like, yeah. uh, and we'll never have that. We'll never be able to like watch the documentary on how the pyramids were made. You know, bum 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 Love that. And fucking, you know, the camera pans over the fucking Hebrews just fucking sweating their asses off in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to see that footage. We're never going to fucking know. Because we can't the, I, I, we can't go back. I mean, John Teeter is not going to fucking jump us in his little fucking jalopy with his uh, time travel device. Because according to him, he couldn't go back that far anyway. Because yeah, he'd go, become too divergent. But be that as it may, that shit isn't going to happen. So we're never going to know. We can only speculate about what we find and look at the hard facts behind what we find in relation to what we know. Exactly. And, and but, you know, me being the, an open minded guy, it doesn't mean that, the, that it's impossible. Again, we're, we're playing the lottery, we're gambling, we're, we're putting it all <laughs> on black, whatever. Like, there. We're still looking, like whether or not we think that Mesopotamia is the oldest, you know, civilization that that did blah blah blah, blah you know, A, B, and C. We're still looking for something older, right? We're, we're always looking for something older because that's that's what you, that's what you do. You you want to push the time, like you need to learn more by pushing the time clock back or by by building up the case that that is really really where that happened. We want to know where zero year is. That ultimately, that's what you and I would like to know. Where's zero year? Mm-hmm. Where does it all really begin? And not so much like where did the first little microbe finally crawl out of the primordial soup or whatever or evolve to that point, you know? Or but, when was the planet seeded? Right, not that. But when did humanity, civilization, what was that thing? Was it, did we have a civilization before and it fell and then it came back again? And how did that civilization start? Or was it just that there were all these little failed civilizations along the way? You know, that's why we keep fucking finding all these things. Or what? What was the thing? What got us to this point? Well, so the, the, what, what people would. Yeah, the, the 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 claims are is that it's you know I mean the cradle of civilization is different than the cradle of humanity, right? Um, the cradle of civilization is that you know I mean the, the Mesopotamia area where farming and and permanent settlements came up. You could you still had to go off and hunt and you gathered, but you could also stay right here because you could grow your food right in front of you, right. and that was the thing that allowed us enough time. To start working out, you know, and then you, you think it was when we started actually taking people that were that were either you know old and wise and 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 you know stick them in the house to sit there and and, and to and to think and to and to meditate on things and you know and then you end up with like fucking philosophy, right? <laughs> like, and 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 other things like that uh, that 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 just start 
to drive the art and culture aspect of things until you end up in like freaking Rome, you know, like, <laughs> and, and Socrates is, is playing in, in a, in a, you know, to, to the people onlookers in a, in a amphitheater talking about the meaning of life <laughs> and existence. That, that's kind of where it all started as far as what, what, we're, what we're saying. But I guess what I'm saying is just like Habilis didn't fall from the sky with a fucking stone tool in his hand, you know, the, the, the Sumerians just didn't drop down out of the planet right here exactly, and we happened to find that fucking place, right? <laughs> yeah, it, um, it it's we want to, like I said, we want it gets back to that we want to know where zero year was, where was where was mm -hmm. the where was the inception of it all, and you can and, sit and there and it, say it, that it, it was it, Mesopotamia or whatever it was, but you know as we've said over the course of this show. We constantly keep finding these these fucking archaeological digs where they're like, oh, wait, this is, like, earlier than this. So, wait, uh, this changes shit. Yeah, this changes everything. Right. And those are the moments that are the most exciting, and we're, we're, we're seeing little hints of those, and the more that that... It's, it's like, you know, b brushing the dust off of, off of a freaking treasure map you know like where, where slowly the picture becomes clear and then you can see ah there it is we need to look there and we haven't even found that yet but slowly we're, we're kind of like dusting off this this full-on picture where, where you can see that wow things are older than we thought they were we were doing this for longer than we thought we were so it's great yeah and I, you know we've 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 beat this uh topic i think to death enough tonight david yeah, but probably. but however I, what you and i really want to see i mean come on now we want to see an archaeological dig where they fucking uncover an outlet with a plug <laughs> <laughs> and, an, and an iPod. <laughs> and an iPod, yeah. <laughs> Kids today is like, what is this thing? Does it make calls? There's a, there's a different fruit on the back. It's like some fruit from the fucking era of the time. <laughs> <laughs> an eye pomegranate? <laughs> this has been Down the Rabbit Hole with David Baddorf, episode two. Take two. If you like this shit hit the like button if you don't hit the little thumbs down button leave a comment subscribe uh we will try Man, i didn't even plug my own i didn't even plug my podcast squatchers lounge podcast uh, yes. thumbs up yeah hit, hit up the squatchers lounge podcast jeff kelly and david baddorf put on a good show and they promote the shit out of this show which helps <laughs>